Alright, what is up you guys and welcome back to another video from your truly the Scarender. Now, before going in, I'm using my inbuilt webcam this time around. This guy, for some reason, decided I don't like you no more, so we're gonna throw him away. We need to buy clearly another one. But uh, Yeah, and also we are redecorating the kitchen, so it's really messy. So I took the spot that I thought was looking less <laughs> less kind of messy uh, so just i really want to say that that's actually I, I, I really don't like to i don't like it have it messy behind me when i record videos but that said um first and foremost we really need to thank mr gamrio 94 he probably is the first person who successfully created a hippie culture in 12 hours that's i think that's amazing like yes I'm using that as a thumbnail. Yes, it might have been proactive, but really, I mean, that's a good thing as it is. Also, the purposes, hippie culture is all about peace and love. Make love, not war. And I really get the chance to use that. So, yeah. Hippie culture in Pokemon. Who knew that was a thing? And it's actually it's quite an interesting one, as um, I thought it was really cringy. The hashtag is thank you, Game Freak. And. Um, after I actually did some soul searching, I realized that, yeah, it is absolutely cringy and maybe a bit forced, but it also goes well with my original episode for the day, which is going to cover what's happening in Japan right now with Game Freak. Uh, I do recognize that um, there really aren't that much love to Game Freak no more, and it has a lot to do with how things have snowballed. And I wanted to first and foremost cover my own thank you to Game Freak, as I do recognize that, like I said, it's cringy and forced because because of how the news is going on, but it also is, is, it's my issue. I'm, I'm not that good at open up, and when people are, you know, bonding together, I'm, I'm kind of usually just steps away. Just, uh, yeah, you, you go hug each other, bastards. But, but this is actually a good cause, and uh, it couldn't be better than to actually talk a bit positive about Pokemon for once, as uh, while the vocal majority, which represents some minority, are actually pretty darn on point right now. They're really, really devastating and uh, slandering a really good cause. Uh, for those who doesn't know, I've always been a Dexter. I didn't necessarily think I was going to be able to say that name and thinking that that was going to be a bad thing. But I didn't want to get involved, in my opinion. I, I stood for it, if someone was asking me where I thought about the change. But uh, besides that, like, I... It was so loaded, there was so much conflict involved with a good cause. And um, that cause of bringing the National Dex movement back, or bringing back the National, National Dex, has slandered to hell. The cause was so, was so simple. We could go as a collective, try to reach out to our concern, to Game Freak, what we think the game should be. Uh, it's very clear that Game Freak probably never could have really done anything about it but we as a community could have not supported it but rather state you know this is something we are disappointed with and that should should all have been that should stood together and just said don't maybe not fix it but dear god know what we're saying about this but instead people use it for malicious content and it became a really really loaded topic and i'm going to go back to that later first and foremost what am i thankful about when it comes to game freak I've been playing this game for 22 years, and I still remember that day I bought Red and Blue. Um, I come, unfortunately, from a really poor family, and, um, well, my family is still poor. Not me, but, <laughs> but basically, my mother has always been, or she is, a bit of an alcoholic. She always has been, and her priorities in money were always somewhere else. If I wanted something, I kind of had to fix it myself. And that's what I did. When I was nine years old, I was actually selling a newspaper and, um, you know, knocking doors. What's Because that was cool to say. Probably that in a scary movie. Anybody know? That's just me. Hope, hope it signed with me. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, the game wasn't that expensive. I do believe roughly $40. So I absolutely had the money. I bought myself a Game Boy. I bought myself the Pokemon Blue Edition. Uh, I liked Charizard better, but Red was sold out when I got there. Um, and you know, I was nine years old. I went to the city. It took like 20 minutes uh, by train. 
is not a not the best thing to do as a kid actually now you think about it but i went there i got it i played it and uh, i was really excited um, um of course people at school had it and you know we all we battled we traded um i of course really really wanted ekans and everybody wanted sand slash sand was great uh, i was i was awful i was awful at that game i'm i'm still am um, but i have fond memories of it we like all the kids were playing it, taking breaks. It was really cool. Pokemon Cart was also there, but that was, you know, all things considered, that was that was a huge thing. Uh, and then, of course, with Har with Harker, I was gonna say, but no, with the Gold and Silver coming out, I remember one of my friends. We we got together, we got ourselves sitting down at home, <laughs> and we just traded starters between one another till we all or till we got them uh, one each. It took like three, four hours. We were not time effective. And, but we did that, and I remember also that I got myself into the first Pokemon community by that, as we had a center called the Magic Center, which was a training card game, still am, Magic. Uh, but they also had a Pokemon Day. The Pokemon Day was for the training card game, but the people that got there were also playing the video game. Uh, I got involved with there and got into the competitive battling, and we had tournaments, which I was a part of. And since Ubers was allowed, yeah. Oh, oh, and Snorlax was our bread and butter. I learned how to properly train Pokemon. And I rarely won, but I was always like top four. Uh, I spent a lot of time in there, you know, because I, I was so excited and I kept going there. I remember when Ruby and Sapphire came out, we had a few guys there who pre ordered from USA because it got out that much earlier. I think it was three or four months before in Europe. So we was really jealous, you know, look at the whole oh, ground on. Blazing was amazing. And, um, yeah, it was just awful. Like, that community, you know, I, I was with them till Generation 4. I stopped playing Generation 4. Um, I got myself a job, I moved out, and um, there was never time for Pokemon. I, I followed Pokemon to an extent, like I saw which Pokemon were in it, but I never played it. I actually didn't pick up the game again till, um, till Black and White 2. And I love that game. Uh, really incredible, what experience, I actually played Platinum afterwards, um, like, not afterwards then, but like two for two years ago, uh, I can't say I appreciate the game as much as anybody's saying, also, I got myself Hardcore and Soul Silver, um, as well as I got Black and White, because I really want to experience those games, and what I'm trying to say is, I'm super grateful, as uh, when I started uh, playing for real in Generation at six, I believe, yeah, when I was starting to really, really pick up and play Pokemon uh, competitively and, of course, upload. There was the, that community that I got to experience was something else. It was really, really exciting talking and learning. I mean, I'm missing out on a lot of things going on from generation four to six competitively. And, um, you know, if you play Pokemon for a story, you're not experiencing Pokemon. That's, that's just how it is. And uh, me getting the chance of actually experience that with the community and Twitter and Pokemon, um, I really I was part of something called Mount Moon, where you can upload a battle to them, and they showcase your game to larger as you get exposed. It really didn't pan out well with me at all. I never like I never grew big on YouTube ever, uh, but I've always been a part of it, and I really appreciate it. If Game Freak is giving me anything, it is. It let me be a child for as long as I wanted to. And um, for me, playing Pokemon, Wi-Fi battles, discussing Pokemon, it's, it's something I'm very passionate about. And um, it helps me relax. Like when I'm stressed with work or a lot of things going on, if I just want to call myself, Pokemon is there to sink my time into something that is meaningless and harmless in most ways. <coughs> But it's something that keeps me going and that lets me like get away from the serious stuff. And Game Freak allowed that to happen and I'm always grateful for that. Yes, this time it hasn't been all that great and you know, it has a lot to do with how the Dex has developed. Um I wanna say my own personal opinions, I say I'm a Dexter and it feels like Dexter seems to be forced to be defending himself about their opinion. Um I never, my my intention is never to hurt somebody else who think the game when it comes out, no matter how many Pokemon there are in it. Uh, if they think that's okay, wonderful. 
as it really couldn't I how do you say it it doesn't matter um, if you think the game is all right with these these things lacking good on you that that's really all I have to say people are excited about the new meta uh, with the Pokemon that are in it and I'm I actually am too uh, but of course I miss the Pokemon that are in it that are somebody said some po some Pokemon is always someone's favorite and <coughs> coughing is mine um, <laughs> But that's the thing, taking away something you're passionate about, something you grew up with, for me, that is Tropius, actually. Tropius has been always a Pokemon I enjoyed so much, and of course it didn't make the cut. I knew that already from the get-go, but knowing that were to happen was heartbreaking. It's a Pokemon I, I grew attached to, like that's, it's a meme for me, it's something that is really strange, and I, I like that. And knowing that I'm now forced to not be able to use that Pokemon, I'm not getting that asset or that that thing to thrive. Yeah, of course, of course it sucks. Is it gonna stop me from not buying a game? No, it's not. Um, the whole point with the um, bringing back the national decks was to inform Game Freak that you know we are here, we care about this. We know they do, um, but we also know that they can't change everything and I want to go into a concept that I think is really important to kind of cover as I do believe people are maliciously act attacking Game Freak even though they are probably most likely not the one involved in that this change at least not how it looks like then the official artwork for a few of the anime come out the new anime here and um, it showcased Pokemon that are in that artwork that absolutely aren't in the Galar region. The game is gonna be in Galar region, so it's fair to assume that when they were starting building this universe, the Galar universe for the Galar region, these Pokemon were in it, and it's very fair to assume that even when the first trailer came out, and very, very likely, um, Game Freak and Pokemon, and most like Nintendo, have sitting down to talk to how do we solve this. Game Freak's goal is to fix a stable game. Pokemon has a deadline of when these things have to happen. Nintendo have to prep for their holiday releases. They can't delay Pokemon. It's It can't happen. The format that Pokemon are built on with merged trading cards and plushies and you know with all the things surrounded by anime, it just doesn't allow a Pokemon to be delayed. And I feel like I failed to say it in my last video that there are so many forces of marketing behind this that it's impossible. And people should be aware of that. Uh, I'm pretty sure that when they sat down, they started to create um, a friend of mine, which is a software development, something called the MVP, which is uh, the main focus to thrive and what is what are we going to create? Um, to make this stand out and try to avoid the spread. They know, they did know exactly, most likely, that this was something that they're going to be ridiculed about, for sure. Um, I think that goes without saying, they're smart enough to to know that it's isn't to happen, or, or it is to happen, I mean. Um, so most likely sat down, Game Freak said that, you know, we go into, of course, get the game bug free <laughs> that, that has to be the focus no matter what and then they can only speculate how many Pokemon that could have been in it and they probably got green light for 400 like that's they must have basically been asking how many can you do 400 we, we can fix that and uh, they probably built in more we really couldn't know but if anything it's very clear that Pokemon showcase and that anime that aren't in the game most likely was at some point at the start of development, but as the time crunches, it just wasn't there. The, the effort to be made wasn't there. And some people might say, but well, that one team on the other game and that one team on the other, it seems to always have built around, built around something like that. So usually a good gaming crew is actually built on a smaller team to, that are synced down and dedicated to their individual projects. So I don't believe if they oh we use all our 200 employees to make the game, I don't believe that would have changed anything. If anything, I think that would have made the game a lot more buggier because you really need expertise in certain aspects. And of course, 
many heads clashing probably not the best idea um, like I said, many of the best games built are built with a small group of people who are having a passion project um, and I don't believe Pokemon ever can become that because they always are on a time crunch and they always need to meet a deadline versus having some I mean they are not designing the Pokemon they get the designs from Pokemon to elaborate to get the game to develop into the game so there are a lot of those things going on and all of those needs to be considered so I'm not like Game Freak knew going in here that they are going to be being the one at blame for sure. Like I can't can't prove anything of this, but basically what I think is that they probably shouldn't announce it in at the Treehouse. I think that was trying to soften a blow uh, when everything else was of course going on. Uh, I can only speculate that. You know, that was hoping that uh, Nintendo's um, showcase of every other game was going to soften the blow of this information. Instead, it became the main focus. Um, and that's just how it is. And they knew this. The only thing I can, like I said before, um, really, really blame Game Freak on is their PR and how they treated this situation, as I do believe they really failed to calm their crowd. Western, yes, we reacted, but they reacted they really, really, really was offended. As like I said before in my previous video, that there is a certain way of how you treat Eastern people in contrast to Western. We usually respond directly and take the blame, basically. But in Eastern culture, you need to show remorse, you need to showcase yourself, and you usually need to wait to the dust to settle, and and you know have a strong argument, or even you don't need argument, but you need to show your case. You need to you know. I was gonna say take your clothes up really expose yourself and say you're sorry like that's the eastern way of doing and they didn't do that they they did a press release and that where matsuda said you know basically you know this is a passion project for all of us and the thing is there that's a very like i said in that previous video it's a very western thing to do unfortunately it's a very disrespectful thing to do in eastern culture so it clearly didn't help and um, yeah that's where the ball is like um matsuda is not gonna go to the release of pokemon sword and shield in the poke center that was planned as i resume for since april and um sure there are speculations that he has other projects and whatnot then there are some speculations that due to threat levels and people are threatening his life that he can't go i actually think it's a mix of both uh i absolutely think he has different projects to assume or go to, but also think that not feeling that supported has made Game Freak kind of avoid the light a little bit, much like Rare did after, I believe, Donkey Kong, when uh, some gaming companies tried to make fun of the, the, the brothers behind Donkey Kong. I'm not going to cover that now, but basically I think this is going to make either Game Freak to avoid media more often or press releases the game is out and i felt consider the trailers and the few interviews they've done that they already start doing that our pr people in interviews that's really not a good sign that more more force them to be silent or not say too much to avoid conflict it's really not a good sign a company should not be forced to be in that position and more so a company such a game freak who supports or create pokemon, pokemon games they created one of the most most sold games in the world, and to them to feel that they can't say what they want or have a creative freedom that are um, miniculed or compromised, of course it sucks. It shouldn't be like that, and um, it wouldn't surprise me to cancel, like I said, that uh, event because of the threat level. People have been stating that Matsuna has been death threat and whatnot. It, it seems weird that um, that Game Freak should have said that that happened, and actually, it turns out they haven't. Um, it's well, a lot of threats are on Twitter, and a lot of Japanese calling him out for different stuff. But the Japanese crowd is also super, super, uh, what do you call it? Um, super supportive, and so I don't know. Yes, they are ha much harsher than us <laughs> Western are, but. Um, yeah, I couldn't tell you. I really, really couldn't. But yeah, they're clearly harsher, and you're calling him heartless and a monster for the things he does. Uh, here in Western, we see some more, more meme it, calling him, you know, not even Thanos was this greedy, or, you know, <laughs> which is great, by the way. Great joke. 
Um, but yeah, um, where was I? Uh, sorry, lost myself in train of thought. Yeah, basically, like uh, about those threats. Um, the only thing I saw Western doing was, and I think this is a shitty thing, uh, but it's harmless, but it's shitty. <laughs> Um, when he got married, which I believe was in August, um, through all the congratulations, they were leveled by bring back the national decks, bring back, basically pointing this out. Like I said, this rather, I would say, good cause turned into such a bad meme and malicious intent that it was it was unlike anything else. Uh, it was basically the one that created it was not. Um, <laughs> was not I was like this thing got alive on its own, and I think the people that really was supportive of the Bring Back National Legs just didn't couldn't stand behind the people that were still using it. They were still offended. They want to bring war, but that's about it. Um, when it comes to threats towards Masuda, I definitely think there were death threats, but death threats through Twitters on small people or sort of kids, and um, most likely people didn't mean it. And I feel it's very unlikely that if they wanted to take something like this serious, they would have done that. Um, and they haven't they haven't responded to it, unless, of course, you count this Pokemon Center event, which we just we can't confirm if this that, that there is a threat level there. It could just be that he doesn't have the time to pull that off. Um, so that's one thing. Like, people are saying he's getting harassed and whatnot, and he probably does, but I think he's also not using Twitter um, to read comments. I, absolutely believe he has people who looks at Twitter and direct him on what to watch. He, Of course he does. He's a massive company. Um, companies are harassed all the time. It's not right, but I'm having a hard time believing that they can't deal with it. Um, of course they can. They have to. They. It's unlikely they wouldn't. And the same thing goes here with the low morale statement from that interview. It's not Game Freaks, Brain Game Freaks themselves, they say it. Um, and I think that's what box me, and it kind of is counterproductive to one of my previous statements was in my previous video. But I realized that it's very unlikely that a company would showcase that, you know, they're being offended, they're being down. Um, of course, he mentioned that, you know, the Dex movement had an effect on them, but I think it has more to do with the people that keep on nagging than was just not backing down and didn't have the intent for the national decks really but just wanted a reaction and be offensive and as long as they get that and they got that through these interviews and of course through publishing that they got death threat and they got what they needed they think they made a change but they didn't they made it far worse as they, 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 they never gave up it just this thing never let down and it brings me back to today when i actually go look at game freak and um this movement, um, thank you, Game Freak. Like I said, hippie culture, <laughs> absolute hippie culture. I love it though. Uh, <laughs> I actually do. And now I think of it, like people are like we should be vocal. Um, I'm kind of, I'm kind of getting there. But I also saw the people that had a malicious intent or thought people were absolute idiots because they were supporting Game Freak. I, 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 people are allowed to have their opinion, and I saw the bring back decks and their memes, the Western memes you would call it, to on the Game Freak site. And you know what? While harmless, they're still active, and um, I think they're not a cause anymore. They just being trolls. They're not a part of what that movement should stand for. And the same thing goes with Thank You Game Freak. Uh, they just want to rally and get a reaction that you know no. Uh, stop <laughs> I guess and that's like I said it's not what it's about I absolutely think that Game Freak has a lot to live up to with a new title uh, I think once the game is out and fans go to get confirmed how many Pokemon are in the game they're going to be an aftermath but it's up to Game Freak and Pokemon and more so Nintendo to take a stand on that what is their pr product worth yes they're going to sell it like crazy but the rumors about the game. How long will that linger? How long will bad press go into be inter integrated with Pokemon? You don't want that as a company. And I think I think it's going to make a big change in the long run. And I think we as fans, while being supportive, must also be critical 
when it comes to the things we don't like because if we don't they will never know and they clearly are listening they've showcased time and time again that yes they are whether or not to listen to western culture or not i couldn't tell you but the japanese culture absolutely got what they wanted which was a reaction that probably probably damaged more them more than they think and uh, i think that's awful so with that said i hope you guys enjoyed this episode like i said thank game freak for being the awesome company you are please try to not compromise too much of your design values i love you guys you stood for so much and i can't wait for my daughter to be old enough to experience pokemon do not compromise Pokemon as much as you did this time. The game might be good and the re-release might be better, but just know that you can't mistreat the PR like this. Even if this is a finished product, the the build-up behind it can't be like this. You guys failed. And you know that. This cannot happen again. This... The people here that support you, we are doing that even in this failure because we like the game we play. But we also know that the things that split us apart this time around was the basic thing that should have gotten us together. We want the game to be good. We have different value how that is to go about, yet this time we didn't stand together. We ridiculed each other for something we should have come apart and said, yeah. Wouldn't that make the game better? I need this for this game to work. That dialogue wasn't here because of the malicious intent for other people. They were fueling something they should never have been able to do. And that really damaged Pokemon and Game Freak. So that's it, guys. Thank you for watching. And take care. Bye.